Hey, this is Ryan West, and we are back at beautiful Flux Studios in New York City. We're going to dive right in and talk about these color circuits that are built right into the 2 Bus Plus. These are really cool. They've given us a harmonic circuit, a paralimiter circuit, and a transformer circuit. In this particular video, we're going to focus on the transformer circuit. This is kind of an old trick for engineers. I heard this years ago. I've seen other mix engineers do this. Uh, a lot of times, coming right out of the console, a mix engineer would take that left and right stereo mix and pop it through vintage mic preamps. And the reason why they did this is because it gave a unique transformer sound. Now, what's a transformer sound? The way I would describe it is that it sort of like tightens the bottom end. It gives a cohesiveness to the sound that wasn't there before. In this case, you can kind of go from mild to wild. It's actually a lot more flexible than just popping it through some vintage preamps. And you have the flexibility of either bypassing it for each individual mix or engaging it for each individual mix, but it's still as easy to recall as working in the box. Really all you have to do is take note in your session, whether it was engaged or not, and at what position your dial was set. Sometimes I'll actually take a picture with my cell phone and pop that right into my session data and I can just look at it and it's super easy recall. So it doesn't really change my workflow again. I'm still getting the flexibility of mixing in the box. But these three additional tone circuits built into the 2 Bus Plus are kind of like having three different pieces of outboard gear that you can add it in any time. Now when I'm mixing, I almost always have this transformer circuit engaged. As a matter of fact, I can't remember one time that I haven't had it engaged during the mix since I got the 2 Bus Plus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play back a hip hop track for you and I'm going to turn the sucker all the way up. We're going to engage and then disengage it so that you can hear exactly what's happening. Now what I want you to listen for is how it tightens up the low end and also gives you just like the sheen on the sides of the mix that I don't get without it. I'm going to disengage it right now and then I'm going to pop it back in. <laughs> Did you hear how that changed the low end? How the whole character of it sounded. It added this sort of, I don't know, a little bit of extra voodoo. I think some of the best circuits that I've ever worked with in audio are kind of one of those things. It's a, it's a little bit intangible. We can kind of describe it in certain ways, but you have to hear it to believe it. And when we have it set on that extreme setting, I think you can really hear the difference. Uh, make sure you're listening on good monitors or good headphones so you can hear that very clearly. With most kind of processing that I use, um, I typically really want to make it really extreme and really pronounced so that I can hear exactly what it's doing. And then my next step is generally to sort of dial it back until it's just about where I want it and then I either go a little up or a little down. In my case with this particular circuit, I found that it almost always sounds exactly like I want it to when it's about in the, uh, I don't know, it's 10 o'clock position or so. Um, that may change from mix to mix. And again, I detail that in my recall picture, but it's super simple. It's just one knob. Now this tone circuit in particular is another flavor that I think gets my mix just that much closer to where I want it to be. It gives it another level of magic, another level of voodoo that I think really helps me out when I'm mixing. It just kind of helps me more quickly get to the sound that I'm going for, the sound that's in my head. 